On a normal school day, Mr. McDowell drives the buggy around the school. On this particular day, a policeman has his speed camera present. The result? Mr. McDowell receives a ticket for going at 31 in a 10 km per hour zone. But how do we know that the data on the ticket is valid? Before any speed camera is used, it must be calibrated. Once calibrated, it takes very little practice to use the LiDAR to accurately measure the speed of a moving object, in this case, a student running. What happens if the LiDAR is not used in the right position? As long as a vehicle is moving directly towards or away from you, the speed measured by the LiDAR is identical to its true speed. As it's too dangerous for the policeman to stand in the middle of the road, the device is usually set up on the side of the road. This results in a slight angle between the device's position and the vehicle's direction of travel. When the angle is significant, the measured speed is less than the vehicle's true speed. This phenomenon is called the cosine effect. In addition to handheld LiDAR devices, the Queensland Police operate speed camera units contained in specially designed vehicles. The equipment housed in these vehicles work on the same principle but are able to scan an area where many vehicles may be passing at once. The first few pulses are used to lock on to the target vehicle. For the device to lock on, it must receive four consecutive valid pulses representing a constant target velocity. The LiDAR sends out 40 pulses to the target and must receive at least 87% of these recognised by the laser. These are then used to calculate the vehicle speed. An image is captured displaying all the relevant information and an infringement notice is sent to the owner of the vehicle. When deploying the LiDAR, the police must always consider various factors to ensure the results are consistent and valid. The main factor to consider is the site selection, as this has the greatest influence on the operating characteristics of the device. Factors that must be taken into consideration when selecting a site include detection area, traffic density, line of sight, and sources of interference. So how can we use what we've learned from this video in other situations? When collecting data in any situation, the key is identifying the variables that may lead to non-valid evidence. An awareness of these will encourage you to make more accurate measurements. But you will also be in a better position to critique the validity of evidence when it is provided to you in the future. Question the source of the data. Question how the data was collected. Question the context. Question everything.